What is up YouTube fam, Robbie C here and today we are going to be addressing a video that has been doing a little better than I expected, I might say. However, inside of that video, I definitely passed along a warning that I think lots of people overlooked because I've had loads of people approaching me in person saying, hey, Robbie, I saw this tip and thought it was really good, so I've been doing it myself. It's been awesome. So I wanted to readdress that and go back to lots of the warnings that I was saying because I never want to be that guy who put a video out on the internet that's leading to people either getting hurt or getting the wrong information. So let's dive in. Wait, 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 wait a minute, I forgot to ask. Elijah, how are you doing today, man? So catch me if I fall. We want to take a quick second to take a break from the action and thank today's video sponsor, Manscaped. Summer's coming. Are you ready to unveil your beach bod? Manscaped is here to ensure that your body is ready for the wild with their full line of game-changing grooming and hygiene products. Don't be the guy at the beach with the Austin Power chest hair. Yeah, baby. It's time to get ready for hot guy summer by heading over to manscaped.com to get not only 20% off, but free shipping by using the code RobbieC20. Now I've been surviving the grizzly winter and trying to keep my beard in check with the beard care package, but Manscaped is dedicated to helping you not only increase your confidence, but level up your personal grooming with the Performance Package 4.0. This kit comes with the essential Lawnmower 4.0, a cordless, and waterproof trimmer to help you alongside some other liquid care routines level up that personal care routine. No matter where you find yourself trimming, this trimmer is the best on the market featuring a ceramic blade highlighting their incredibly advanced skin safe technology to make sure that those nicks and cuts are a thing of the past. Inside the performance package, you're also gonna find the Crop Reserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner to make chafing a thing of the past because we all know it can get a little uncomfortable sometimes, but what's not gonna be uncomfortable is the inside of your nose because the performance package also comes with the Weed Whacker 2.0. <laughs> How do we forget to mention this? If you order now with this code, you're gonna get two free gifts alongside your package. You're gonna get the Shed Travel Bag as well as the Manscaped Boxers. Ultimate comfort in a multitude of ways. So do yourself a favor and head over to manscaped.com to get not only 20% off, but free shipping if you use the code RobbieC20 at checkout. That's right, 20% off plus a free shipping if you head over to manscaped.com and use code RobbieC20 at checkout. Discomfort, itching, cuts, nicks, yeah, never heard of them, especially after Manscaped. For those of you who have been following the channel honestly for a short amount of time, especially those who've been following for a while, you know that I got to go up to Boston a few months ago to be part of the Northeast Disc Golf Expo, and I wanted to check off a bucket list course in Maple Hill. But I knew that my distance wasn't necessarily what I wanted to be, so I asked Mike to work with me pretty intensely, and I spent a lot of hours every day working in a field, working on my form, and honestly connecting with my coach, Mike Strauss, to kind of dive through the whole process. And we discovered a few things along the way that were were kind of holding back my form in a major way and we've honestly been working on those things ever since but one of them was the idea that I wasn't feeling the disc rip out of my hand and Mike came up with a solution for me that was a little unorthodox he wanted me to grab the disc as hard as I can and try to throw it and a lot of you have done something similar and noticed that perhaps while you were throwing the disc, you were actually letting it go rather than letting it rip out of your hand, which is paramount to getting that major distance power. So Mike has actually, while he's been up in Chicago, been receiving a lot of questions about this, and he has told the story several times of his perspective from how that entire exchange went, along with addressing some of the warnings again from a coach coaching a coach's perspective. So yeah, there's just like a whole lot of lessons to be learned. So I wanna dive in and have you guys hear Mike's side of the story of the two weeks to Maple Hill journey, especially talking about that overgripping piece when it comes to your form. Hey everyone, um, out here practicing. I had a uh, conversation with, uh, with Robbie, um, one of our coaching sessions. And we talked about what I had done with him during the uh, two weeks to Maple Hill and where I had him squeeze really, really tight and throw really hard. And we got a lot of feedback, good feedback, a lot of questions. And one of the points was that it seemed counterintuitive, right? It didn't make sense. We're talking about how, why do I want to squeeze this thing as hard as I can and throw it as hard as I can? Aren't I muscling the disc? 
And um, for those who had that thought, you're 100% right. But as a coach, I always have to try to figure out what's going on with my audience, with my student, and take information and kind of really dig into it. And one of the things he was doing was he was digging his nail into the top of his thumb to the point where it actually bled. So I had to think about that and I watched his videos and I realized that he was actually opening up his hand or loosening his grip and that's why it was sliding out. So the night before we did that video and it wasn't planned, we were talking and uncovered the fact that he had a fear of grip locking to the point where he was actually worried about it going behind him. Now, I knew with the mechanics that with him bracing, going into the plant, going, you know, getting the braking system and opening it up, that it would never happen. But he still, and he resisted the thought. He said, well, if you're telling me, Mike, that is absolutely gonna rip out, then why is it when I'm holding it tight in the, in the house and I swing it, why doesn't it go, you know, break something? Um, Actually, for any of those of you who remember Brady Bunch, uh, there was an episode, Mom said, don't play ball in the house. Who goes for a shot? Oh, no. Mom's favorite face. She always says, don't play ball in the house. Um, but I told him, I said, psychologically, you aren't going to let yourself let go of that. But when you go out to the course, it's going to happen. So what I needed to do was dispel his fear. I needed to make sure that if we're ever gonna get over this, this hurdle and take him progressing down this journey, that fear of grip locking has to go. He cannot release. So let's take it to the extreme. Let me take it to a point where I can prove to him that it is never going to stay in your hand. And whether you want it to or not, it's going to rip out. So I told him, uh, tomorrow, bring your tripod and you can't do this unsupervised because if I thought that there was a chance that his biomechanics would have, and he got into a bad position, that it would create a grip lock, which it could, then it would deepen that fear. And I didn't want to have to do that because then I have to do damage control on that, right? So I told him, set up your tripod, and uh, he did. He called me the next day, and we. Uh, we proceeded for him to throw the very first one. It did not loosen up. His grip stayed tight, he threw it as hard, and it ripped right out of his hand. And I asked him, how did it feel? And he goes, I don't, I don't know, that felt completely different. Because I'd asked him the night before, I said, have you ever, you know, if you hang on to a disc, have you ever felt the disc rip out of your hand to where your hand still stays closed? Because his, I already did the evaluation, his, his grip was fine, so how does it go from here to cutting his nail? Well, he was doing this and he would loosen, he would re-grip. So he threw another one, ripped out of his hand. And I said, because he had his headset on and I'm talking to him through Zoom. And I said, any chance of that grip locking? He was amazed. He said, no. I said, now I want you to take it to 70% power. Still keep the grip, but 70%. Well, his brain automatically went back to the old neural pathway. Oh, we get to decelerate? Well, now I'm going to relax it and it came out sideways, really light, just slipped out. Regrip it, grip it super tight, throw it really hard. And then after about 10 minutes, we talked about it. He truly knew that there was zero chance that this thing was gonna ever grip relax to the right. He threw several over 400 feet. Now, now that we've taken that fear, that barrier, that hurdle, it's bigger than a speed bump, that would really, really um, be a detriment to his throws and his progress. Now that we've eliminated that, he has been able to progress and we're gonna take it into the next steps. Inevitably, I wanna get him back to where he can be more fluid. But it's also like what I talk about, making sure that you're gripping from the elbow down so we can keep this as loose as possible. And has he relaxed the grip some now? Yes, but the extreme scenario of gripping it and just ripping it as hard as you can, again, to take away um, that fear. Once that's gone, now that's where we're there. So wanted to take a little bit of time to explain the backstory and where that came. Uh, as a coach, I have to sometimes make things very specific. Is it an all or nothing? Is it a template that everybody should do? Absolutely not. Uh, 
but it was very specific to that situation again to dispel the fear and eliminate that fear of grip lock that was keeping him in that position. Anyways, I wanted to give that backstory so everybody knew the context of what this drill really was about and why it was very specific to a situation. I'll see everybody on the next video. I think what is super important to acknowledge is that Mike said it's definitely a case by case basis and that over gripping, if your body mechanics aren't in the right setup and you're pulling a lot already and you have a bit of a lean forward, this is going to cause some actual huge major grip locks, which could further ensnare or you or trap you into that fear of what happens if I over grip lock and things like that. So once again, I wanna pass this warning off for this technique that this should never be a long-term thing. I know there's honestly a lot of debate going on amongst coaches right now in terms of how hard are you supposed to grip the disc, even when you're throwing for distance normally, not just while we're trying to teach this mechanic or this idea of the disc ripping out of your hand. So I'm no kinesiologist or long-term, I've been coaching for 25 years or something like that, but I do know what has worked for me and I am getting back further and closer to that idea of sort of having a firm grip so that I know that I'm actually throwing the disc, but I also am not necessarily trying to grip lock and death grip that thing at the same time. It's all evolution and a lot of disc golf is teaching your body and probably sports in general, honestly, teaching your body what it feels like to do the correct thing and getting that sensation to connect between, hey, brain, this is what you told my hand to be doing. This is what you told my body to be doing when it goes right and connecting with that idea so that you can later on do that motion as well. So where does that leave us for you right here? Understand that when we're throwing for distance and we're looking for that major distance, two of the major components that's gonna help us get that is the outward extension, which is where the body has almost stopped. We've slammed into the brace and just the arm propels forward so that all of the energy is coming into that hit point, that 10 o'clock outward motion, or for you lefties, that one or two o'clock outward motion. And the disc is then ripping out of my hand at that moment. And honestly, I'm still trying to get myself to figure out something on that turning of the wrist, but we're gonna have a little more to talk about that in a future video. I just wanna make sure that you guys know that today, it's not about long-term grip locking that disc, because like we said, it could lead to a host of issues. So that is gonna wrap it up for today's video. I wanna say thank you as always for watching and thank you for tuning in. Y'all are absolutely the best. And I make these videos to say, hey, I fully understand that wrong information can come out of me, as well as there can be information that can misconstrued and things like that. So. Like I said, don't want to be the guy on the internet putting these videos out, steering you in the wrong direction. And honestly, I try to make sure that a lot of my videos are about mental strategy and attacking the game that way. Because I think that even if you have poor biomechanics and you're doing things incorrectly, you still probably can score better by having the right mental approach and the right mental, like, I don't know, just like a wherewithal to stay positive while you're out there. Because this game is super, super, mentally aggressive and we want to make sure we stay on top of that so in the meantime thank you for watching i hope you have an amazing rest of your day and that you can make it fantastic for someone else too but for now we're going to leave you with the birdie